for the first time, a Cybertruck was involved in a crash. And there's a lot of first responders out there worried that if they show up to an incident involving a Cybertruck, they won't be able to get the passengers out. The Cybertruck is a beast of a vehicle. It looks nothing like any vehicle out there today. And I ran down to the Tesla dealership to see what it was all about. I was hoping to do a video down there. I was hoping to get into that vehicle and see it. But unfortunately, I had to stay three feet away as I had it roped off. But after seeing that vehicle in person, it kind of grows on you. It's a lot different seeing it in person versus seeing it on the internet. But the design of this vehicle has a lot of first responders concerned. This is nothing like we've ever worked with before. It looks a lot different. But in reality, from what I'm seeing on the outside, what I'm seeing in other videos, it's not really constructed much different than other Teslas, other electric vehicles. Many people are concerned about the weight of the Cybertruck in regards to being on the road and crashing into other vehicles. However, the weight of the Cybertruck is very similar to a vehicle like a Ford F-150 crew cab. And it's far lighter than something like the new electric Hummer. The biggest difference are the bulletproof body panels. You can literally shoot bullets at this thing and they're not going through. All that sounds scary and the fact that it's bulletproof makes it seem like it'll be difficult to get into. I think most fire departments will have the proper tools to get through that material. Your average sawzall blade, your air chisel, they all should rip through that material without any issue. Many media outlets are going crazy with the news of the first crash involving a Cybertruck. However, when you look at the details, it's really not a big deal. The Cybertruck wasn't even responsible for the crash. What's currently being reported is a Honda Accord left the roadway, went off an embankment, and ricocheted off of this Cybertruck causing damage. And it didn't do a lot of damage to the truck at all. If you look at the damage, it seems like it mostly hit the side of this vehicle, damaged the stainless quite a bit, ripped a lot of trim off the wheel cover, but overall there appear to be no injuries from this crash. Now, if you look at the crash test videos out there, this vehicle crashes much like any other vehicle. And one thing to note, this does have the Giga castings in the front. Now, I don't have a lot of details on the full construction of this vehicle yet, Hopefully in the future I'll get some hands-on time with this vehicle, I get to see it tore apart, and I look forward to getting in there and really understanding what's going on with the casting in that vehicle and the construction of the vehicle. But if you compare it to the Model Y, for example, that Giga casting in front, there will be some changes as we look at extrication. When we look at something like a dash lift, a dash roll, there might be some changes that we have to adopt in order to actually be able to lift that dash or roll that dash. But with newer vehicles, crumple zones, the way those vehicles dissipate energy away from the passenger compartment, we're not having to do as many extrications as we used to. However, when you have a vehicle in a high energy crash, something above 35, 40 miles an hour, where we really shine as fire departments really having to get in there and do extrications, that's where things may be a challenge with a vehicle like this. And not only the Cybertruck, but looking at other vehicles with this Giga casting, like the Tesla Model Y, I don't have a full grasp of what it's gonna take to do some of these more advanced extrication techniques. Hopefully in the future, I'll do a video to discuss this issue directly. Now, a few things about the Cybertruck that really make it unique. I've already mentioned the bulletproof body panels. The side windows are gonna be laminated glass. They're not quite bulletproof, not like uh, Elon said initially, but they will be laminated glass like many newer vehicles, so you'll have to act appropriately if you need to access patients inside. The other thing is this vehicle uses a 48 volt system. So we've thrown away the 12 volt battery, now we have a 48 volt battery. This is still considered low voltage by many industry standards. Now the 48 volt system is most likely chassis grounded. It's gonna go out to all the peripheral equipment. There's hundreds of items that used to run on 12 volt, they'll now run on 48 volt. Overall, at this point, I don't believe the 48 volt system is gonna add any extra hazard to fire crews operating on scene. The other unique thing about this vehicle is the battery box itself. If you've seen one of my other videos, for example, the Tesla Model X that went into the ocean after trying to launch a jet ski at a boat launch, should be this video right here, but that vehicle, the battery box filled up with water. That caused a fire. The vehicle was burning underwater. The Cybertruck has a special mode called wade mode that allows the vehicle to drive through water 
and it pressurizes the inside of the battery box. It's a positive pressure system, very similar to our SCBA. My only concern with this Wade mode, the strategy around pressurizing the battery box, is this is a mode that needs to be turned on. If you've got a vehicle that maybe it is launching a boat and it gets away from the driver, or the driver just backs into the water too far, they don't have that Wade mode on. It's possible they're going to flood their battery, going to cause a fire. If the vehicle's caught in a flood, caught in a hurricane, for example, like Hurricane Ian a few years ago, because the vehicle's off, that battery box is not going to be pressurized. The flood waters, a storm surge will come in, it'll likely flood out that battery box. Now the air pressure used for Wade mode actually comes from the suspension. The suspension is adjustable and it's all done through air pressure. Based on my research, it appears the minimum ground clearance is 8 inches and it goes all the way up to 16 inches. Even though this vehicle has been released, it's not really been released to the public. My understanding is it's really been leased to their engineers, so their engineers can drive these vehicles around and test them, work all the bugs out. Now, there are some high-profile people that have gotten these vehicles, and that's great for them. But as far as being out in the general public right now, it doesn't appear really to be the case. One big issue I have with this vehicle being on the road right now is the ERG, the Emergency Response Guide. Currently, there's no emergency response guide available for this vehicle. So if you happen to be in an area where a lot of these vehicles are driving around and you respond to a crash involving one of these cyber trucks, you might have multiple issues trying to make these vehicles safe during your operation. To learn more about the importance of emergency response guides, click this link right here.